This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. We're now going to go through and look at how we manage our receivables balance. So receivables balances arise whereby we introduce credit sales into a business. But when we introduce our credit sales, that introduces an additional level of risk with regards to the collectability of our debts. So there is an increased risk that we're going to have extra costs within our business due to irrecoverable debts. So before we go through and offer our customers any credit, we need to go through there and consider three things. First of all, we need to go through there and consider the actual credit status of our customer. So the customer's approach does is looking to enter into some credit sales. So they're making the purchases from us. We are offering them the sales. We need to see whether or not that customer is worthy of granting credit, i.e. do we expect them to pay that cash back within the future? Do they have an ability to pay the cash to us in the future? Once we've assessed the credit worthiness of the customer, we then need to go through there and look at the specific terms that we go through there and offer. So how long is the credit period going to be? Are we going to go through there and offer any potential discounts? What's the maximum amount of credit that we are going to grant to that customer to ensure that they pay on time? And then once we've got that sorted, we then need to look at the management of the collection of cash. So we've made the sale to our customer. We've decided upon the terms. How now do we go through there and ensure that we get the cash collected on that regular basis? Is there anything that we can do to prompt the customer to ensure that they pay on time? What the notes go through and then do is they go through and look at those three separate areas and give you additional information to help you understand by what we mean by assessing the credit status, offering credit terms, and the management of the cash collection. So the first one goes through there and looks at assessing the credit worthiness of the customer to see whether or not we should grant them credit in the first place. And I think one of the key aspects that you need to appreciate is that we don't just do this process when we first offer the credit to the customer. It must be done and reassessed on a regular basis because a customer's credit worthiness can change over time. They may get into financial difficulties if they get into financial difficulties you need to be aware of that so you don't want something to just happen and you be unaware of it you want to monitor that customer's credit worthiness on a regular basis uh, how we go through and assess that customer's credit worthiness there's five ways that we can think about it there we could get references if you like from the bank that go through there and explain that they are regular payers uh, we could get references from the trade so maybe that customer of ours has entered into credit purchases with other entities so we could get references from them to back up their payment on a regular basis. We could also go through there and use their published accounts or their own sales records to go through there and have a look to see what their level of cash is, what their payables balance is and what their payables days is to look at how regularly they make the payments to their suppliers because we are their suppliers they are our customer and i think the most important one that businesses would go through and use is your credit rating agency so approaching your credit rating agencies dun and bradstreet is one that we have here within the uk they will go through there and offer you information about the level of risk and the level of payments that that customer has made in the past. And it's good because those credit rating agencies have experience of being able to rate customers ability to pay the cash back on any debts that they have. So it's a good source of external third party information to help us assess the customer's credit worthiness. In terms of going through there and looking at the, the credit terms, that's going through there and looking at the specific terms that we offer. And I think I've mentioned three of the four things already, isn't it, in, in our earlier chat within the video. Uh, we go through there and look at the credit limit value, so the maximum amount of credit sales that we can offer them because we don't want to offer them too much because the more that we offer them, that increases the risk of default, doesn't it, and irrecoverable debts, thus reducing our profitability. We also go through there and look at the number of days of credit that we are going to go through and offer them. So we tend to offer them a shorter period first to ensure that they can pay on time. And then as time goes on, 
we can go through there, can't we, and offer them a longer period once they have proved their ability to go through there and, and pay on time. Uh, we could also consider discounts uh, on prompt payment, which is something that gets examined within the exam numerically. So we shall see that shortly. And then I think the one that we didn't mention before is what happens if the customer does decide to pay late. You know, we, we need to, if you like, put in a deterrent to prevent them from paying late. And that deterrent is charging interest. So we need to specify a specific amount of interest that will be charged on the customer if they decide to go through there and pay us late for whatever reason that may be. The third thing that we need to go through and consider is looking at the collectability of the debts. So we need to go through there and think about what is going to happen if we've offered, say, 30, 60, 90 days worth of credit. How do we ensure that the customer does pay on time? OK, so this is more of an internal procedure as opposed to anything external. What do we do internally within that business to ensure that we collect the debts on time? So what we've got there, five little things uh, to go through and consider. Uh, the first thing is that we do is on a regular basis, we send a statement of account. Essentially, that just goes through there and, and takes a snapshot of the customer's receivables ledger that we have within our books and shows the invoices that we have issued them with records the payments against those invoices and therefore then lists out any outstanding invoices. It would also go through as well and note any specific payment discounts that we have offered and they have been accepted by us because they have paid on time. It may also detail any interest. It may also go through as well and detail any return of goods that have been made with regards to, to sales returns. And what can happen there is that if there are any discrepancies between what we have stated on the statements and what the customer believes to be correct, then we can reconcile those differences and ensure that the right amounts are agreed between the two parties. If the customer is on longer terms, uh, potentially we could go through there and send them a reminder letter. Uh, if we then go through and receive no cash, uh, we can then go through there and send a second reminder letter before we can then go through there and threaten legal action. Okay, Once we've gone through there and threatened legal action, we can then go through there and, and look at all the possible options to go through there and recover the debts. Okay. Uh, in terms of looking at the recoverability of the debts, what you'll find a lot of businesses do, and I think it's something that you will have seen within your fundamentals of accountancy course, is that a company, when it has its receivables figure, on the statement of financial position and that receivables figure comes from your receivables control account we will have our receivables ledger and what we do with that receivables ledger is we look at the individual balances on the individual customer accounts and then once we've gone through and looked at the individual balances on the individual customer accounts we then analyze them out don't we and when we analyze them out we analyze them out into periods with regards to how long it is until payment is due so we go through there, don't we, and look at debts that are due within 30 days, 60 to 90, 90 to maybe 120, and then anything that is 120 plus days due from our records. Because what we can go through and do there is we can analyse the debt into more detail and start to think about what extra procedures might be necessary to look at debts that are maybe 120 days or longer overdue and how we can go through there and begin to collect in that cash. That's it for now with, in regards to the actual quantitative section of the notes. Uh, so looking at, do we offer credit? What are the specific terms and how do we go through there and manage the cash collection? So there could be one or two questions that are non-computational with regards to receivables collection. But what we go through and look at next is we begin to go through there and look at the numerical aspect with regards to the interest that we incur on our receivables and also any settlement discounts that we offer and the impact that that has on the financials and also beginning to look there as well at the world of invoice discounting and factoring.